Hey guys, welcome to 3 and Out. You can check out the podcast below in the description. And here's what I need you to do. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel to stay up to date to everything we're doing here on 3 and Out and the Volume. Listen, I, I have a soft spot for the Valley in California. And when I say the Valley, I mean from Sacramento down to Bakersfield. That would be considered the, the, the Valley. And when you think of California, you got L.A., Hollywood, you got the Bay Area, tech and banks, really banks, you know, finance in L.A. too. But then like a, a huge part of our economy, and I, I know my dad was a farmer, is in that area. It's a huge reason why we're one of the biggest economies in the world. It's not just Silicon Valley. It's not just all the cash in L.A. It's the farming. We have some of the best farming in the world. And my dad, when I was a kid, he got, they, you know, my brother's still in it now. They're not in tomatoes, but when they were heavy in tomatoes, he would go down in Fireball and Dos Palos in some of these areas, these little rural towns that places you would see in Texas or in Alabama or in Mississippi. We have these in California. They just don't ever get talked about. And I actually drove through recently. I went to visit my cousin within the last month in Fresno, and I drove through Fireball. And I have several times. It is a tiny little town. But when you drive through that, and you drive through all these little towns, there's a lot of character. You know, th these are tough, hardworking people. There is not much there. And I, I know, I don't know Josh Allen personally, but I know Josh Allen. And having worked at Fresno State, we got a lot of guys from these Valley towns. And the irony is Kaepernick, who was from Turlock, and Josh Allen, who's from Fireball, to, I mean, Turlock's a lot bitter, bigger than Fireball, are just Valley towns. And these guys desperately wanted to go to Fresno State. And obviously, Josh Allen was never offered a scholarship there. And he had this huge chip on his shoulder with this immense talent. And people nitpicked it. He wasn't accurate. He didn't have it. He had to go to freaking Wyoming. And he was still the seventh pick in the draft. And all you ever hear is how terrible he was his first couple years. Yeah, he was terrible his rookie year. He was a lot better by his second year. 20 touchdown, 9 picks. And obviously last year he was phenomenal. But his talent early on his rookie year, even all the stuff they had to clean up, you went, wow, this guy has a, a boatload of natural ability. The size, the athleticism, the arm. It's, could he become accurate? And he clearly worked and worked. But to get better, I would say at anything, one, you need to do it. And he's been able to play from the jump. And two, you got to have the character, the competitive character, the mindset, the work ethic, and the willingness to be pushed. The willingness, the willingness to be coached hard. And to go to levels that, you know, you're even a little uncomfortable being pushed to. And clearly he was open to it under Sean McDermott, under Brian Dable, and all he has done has improved. I don't think we've ever seen from his rookie year to where he is now in his fourth year. Is this his fourth year? Yeah, this is his fourth year. It seems a little different because he just got a contract extension. But it is dramatic. Like, Lamar's gotten a lot better. Mahomes got a lot better. But they were pretty damn good by, like, year two. Obviously, Mahomes, his second year, won the MVP. Lamar, by his second year... I think also won the MVP. I mean, these guys were immediately elite players. There were people questioning Josh Allen really till last year. And I, I was actually much more sold by his second year because I knew the type of person he was. And again, I just follow him on Instagram. I know people that know him. I know his head coach. Not that I talk to Sean that much, but whenever I'd see him at the combine and the way he would talk about him. And I know the type guy in the one year that I spent about around Sean McDermott, Sean McDermott is not some bullshitter. He's not like me. I, I'm a little more probably prone to hyperbole and more of a hype machine. That is not Sean's deal. And I remember talking to him several years ago going into Josh Allen's third year. And he was so bullish on Josh. And to get Sean to be like that, you have to be wired the right way. So he believed in the person. The talent, we all knew the guy had it. And now you're just watching. Physically, he's on a different level. He moves around like he's Cam Newton. He's got an arm and throws it like he's Patrick Mahomes. His team is loaded. His defense is clearly much better. We're watching a guy with all this talent 
figure it out in front of our eyes over these last 18 months, and it's awesome to watch. That guy is a certified badass. That guy is a player who's going to continue to win big in the NFL. That's what it looks like. Just like we've watched Mahomes for years, that's what it looks like. And I know the Chiefs are struggling. They're just, they're a little off right now. Mahomes a little off. They're turning the ball over. I, I'm not going to write them off. They have too much, like I talked about with Josh, competitive character, the championship blood. I, I see it with the San Francisco Giants, who as of recording this, you know, the Dodgers won the second game. And listen, I think the Dodgers probably end up winning the series. But the Giants are not going to fold. They have too much championship character with their core guys. You watch Travis Kelsey tonight when they were down pretty big and they scored. Zero celebration. He told everyone we're running back to the sideline. We don't celebrate when we're getting our ass kicked by a team that we should be better than. Even though, based on the roster right now, so the Chiefs have some issues on defense, maybe they're not better. Maybe the Bills are the class of the AFC. Maybe it's just that simple. Because that's what it looks like. I mean, they played him at home tonight, and they shoved him around. They thoroughly outplayed him. The Bills look like the more well-rounded team. But it's st- just like the Chiefs, it starts with the quarterback. And the energy that the quarterback gives off, his, just his talent, how just good he is. I mean, I, I don't really know how else to put it. Like, what can he do? He's got touch on the short passes. He's got the ability, to obviously, to push the ball back intermediately, a deep out, a deep comeback to throw these ropes. He can clearly throw it a million mile, miles far, right, on like a deep pass, on a go route, on a post. He's got this playmaking ability to scramble behind the line of scrimmage. He can break tackles like Roethlisberger, but he's faster like Cam Newton to run. And he just starts like his instincts now as a quarterback look like a high-level Pro Bowl elite guy. He looks like an all-pro level player. He looked like his counterpart today. He looks like Mahomes. That's what he looks like. Josh Allen, Mahomes, Herbert. Like, that's what it's supposed to look like. And what do all three of those guys have in common? All high-character guys. All kind of have a blue-collar, smaller-town feel. Mahomes, I don't know the exact town he grew up in, but in Texas. Now, I think he did he grow up in Dallas. But he went to Texas Tech. Obviously, Herbert grew up in Eugene. And Josh Allen grew up in Fireball. Like, they, these guys just kind of humble roots, normal guys, very relatable, bust their ass. You know, I know Mahomes' dad was a pro athlete, not the case with these other two guys. But, like, easy to root for. I gravitate toward all three of them. I'm a huge fan. If I was a 10-year-old, I'd want all three of their jerseys. If I was a dad, I'd want my kid to look up to those three guys. And it's just cool. Like, the NFL's in a good spot. And if you're the Chiefs, like, you you got hit in the mouth by, I, I wouldn't call that your rival because you've owned them just like you have the Ravens, but now two teams that you've kind of pushed around recently, the Bills and the Ravens, have got you. So I don't necessarily, you know, could the Chiefs, as a wild card, beat them in a playoff game? For sure, on the road. But, like, it, the one thing it does with the Ravens and definitely with the Bills their head coach, Sean McDermott, can get in front of the group. Josh Allen can look at everyone in the huddle and go, guys, we can beat these guys in a big game, in the playoffs, in January, assuming the Chiefs get there. Because we've done it. We beat them at Arrowhead. Like, that, that was an enormous win. Fun to watch, even with the rain delay. Don't know how you guys do it on the East Coast, but I, I, I couldn't be any bigger of a Josh Allen fan. I uh, just love watching the guy. I love his story. I feel like I know him. I just know so many people like that. Obviously, they aren't that good at football. And I know he represents certain people in the Valley that just take a lot of pride in watching guys like that have success. And, uh, and yeah, what, what a performance. Thanks for watching 3 and Out. You can check out the podcast below in the description. And make sure you subscribe right now to the Volumes YouTube channel.